Sub YouTube, simply. Oh, no luck here. And today we're gonna be opening the most censored Yu-Gi-Oh set ever made. It is the legendary duelist Sisters of the Rose. And then I ask you guys to check out the channel, subscribe for more uh, epic Yu-Gi-Oh videos. As you can see there, girl power. Um, so yeah, the Harpy Ladies. Every time you guys see that spandex going on, it's basically censored, and they probably have messed with the cleavage as well. Except for Mai. Mai's looking a, a little. Uh, she's showing, showing some skin there. You don't see the spandex going on. But even the trains, you guys, you might see a little bit of spandex around those wheels. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, you guys. So uh, interesting. One of the most s censored sets ever made. Um, but yeah, you got Mai Valentine and her harpies. You got Taya and her, I guess, cyber. Uh, ritual cards, technically, and uh, then you have uh, I, I always forget her name, um, the Black Rose girl, she's a cool looking girl, she has the Black Rose support in here as well, and then trains, because everybody loves trains, especially Harpies, Lunalites, and uh, red, red Rose, Blue Rose girls, but yeah, so very excited for this box, you guys, I'll always love the uh, kind of kickback to the nostalgic classics, and uh, we'll also begin making videos again, because we're taking a little break there for a little bit, um, and we are going to be starting a uh, card shop our first card shop uh, pretty soon you guys pretty pretty big deal for us it's not the card shop I want you guys to imagine for simple and lucky but it is a start I guess you could think of it as a stepping stone uh, for the future we have started our online store so simple and lucky .com, eBay uh, eBay store and TCG store and we have lots of guys here ready to ship this product so um, yeah, we're starting off and we're seeing if it's gonna gonna work out. So we'll definitely have all the singles you guys on Simply Unlucky ready to go and eventually TCG Player and eBay probably a few days after the release though. Um, but yeah, that Harpy Lady Perfumer is the short print card in this set. And so uh, just kind of like Bingo Machine Go Go uh, was three or three to five per case. Uh, your Perfumer will be your three to five per case uh, for this set. And that card, dude, Perfumer's crazy. It's a legit plus two possibly right when you summon it. That's, that's insane. Uh, but yeah, girl power. So let's get into it. And yes, uh, we'll talk more about the card shop as the video kind of goes on, you guys. Uh, just because we are going to do a one box opening. Uh, hopefully showing you some of the more cards and then we'll kind of get going just into I want to do a case opening for you guys just to show you make sure I show you everything But you know, we'll do maybe it ends up usually being around six boxes um, So yes, stay tuned for the longer the massive opening here But at the same time if you want to see just one box, let's get started And then the sleeves today. I did have uh, we are just I, mean, I think we almost ran out actually of the Kaiba box with the Kaiba sleeves on SimpleLucky.com. We are going to go ahead and use Ultra Pros though uh, sleeves for this master set I'm wanting to put together for this set. So let's get started. Another classic playmat out. As you can see, my chill in there. Um, so most people are saying the Luna Lights is probably the better archetype out of here. So you'll see a lot of the reprints from the classic cards as commons. And uh, Petite Angel. And our first Ultra Rare Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liebe. I feel like that's a German word. It has to do with like being together, something like that. Maybe some sort of uh, love type deal. Um, but yeah, probably not going to say that word right, but right. But very cool card, a uh, very powerful OTK potential for the uh, tr choo 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 trains. So uh, you guys can read this here, but I'm going to read some of the cards uh, as we go through the entire opening, the massive part of the opening. I uh, will read more, but this opening for the box, I kind of more want to read the, like, the harpy cards. But this is really interesting because you can put this guy on a rank 10 XCs and then you can get multiple attacks based on the, I think, the material. And then you can remove a material to increase the attack by 2,000. Gains 2,000 attack for the dude. This is crazy. That's 4,000 already. Holy moly. Holy guacamole. And then Harpy Lady Elegance. So better ways to mess around with the uh, Harpy Lady Sisters. So very cool there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sleeve up Super Dreadnought Man. All right, and actually looks pretty cool. You're gonna see all these cute girls, censored girls, um, but uh, this thing's pretty insane looking. I kind of like it. Kind of like battleships. I feel like instead of trains, they could have done battleships. I don't know why. I like ships more than trains. But, uh, yeah. All right, Luna Lights, the machines, Cyber Angels, the Night Express train, nice cool reprint. Uh, this is a Blackwing of the Darkest Rose. Blackwing, really. 
uh, blooming, but uh, for black rose. And so very cool. This one gives you rose tokens. Um, interesting card. People are checking that one out. So this is a duelist pack. You guys remember five cards per pack. And uh, one of the lights. Harpy Queen has a reprint. And a common Merciful Machine Angel. And this is a uh, tribute your Cyber Angel Ritual Monster. And you get to draw cards and place one hand from the bottom of your deck. So very cool. Kind of gets you moving with your different cards for the deck. Make sure you get your combo wombos. Cyber Egg Angel. Your Cyber Angels. Very nice. So there's Super Rays right there. All right. Elegant Egotist. Luna Lights. Black Rose Dragon as a common. It's always nice to see a cool Black Rose reprint. Still played in most Synchro decks. Just can't beat destroying the field. Mark of the Rose. And then Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. There we go. What actually is going on with that guy? <laughs> Crazy. Crazy cards. Detached material do 2,000 damage uh, to your opponent. To get the Juggernaut later on. Cyber Angels. We got Blue Rose in here as a common. Witch of the Black Rose. Uh, Lunalite Emerald Bird. She's pretty sweet. She's your four star normal special. You can send a Lunalite card from your hand to the grave if you do draw a card. Nice. You can target Lunalite monsters that are banished. Use a special summon them. Very cool. So out of the archetypes in here again, Luna Lights were kind of seen as the more competitive one. The trains are pretty sweet as well. A mag Magnificent Angel, Machine Angel. Another uh, quick play for the machines. Machine Angels, I guess. Cyber Angels. Uh, Luna Lights, Serenade Dance. Interesting. Serenade Dance. Harpies, the dancers, Harpy Dancer, uh, Black Rose, or Black Garden, sorry, and then Ritual Sanctuary, another Luna Light. Um, so interesting thing about the set is I really wanted to know which archetype you guys are interested um, in making a deck with the cards from here, because I know a lot of you nostalgic guys are like, dude, Harpy's nice, but then more competitive guys think on Luna Lights, what about you tra train guys, choo-choo train guys, you know? But what's going on? It's nice to see Black Rose uh, support reprinted as well. Cyber Angel Izana, and uh, kind of your most uncensored card, I guess, for this set. Even though, I don't even know. It's like white instead of skin. But yeah, uh, very good card for the uh, Cyber Angels. A new boss type monster. Interesting that she's not an ultra. Keep on going here. A lot. I feel like they really printed the Harpy cards as Ultras. Really pushing the Harpies. Harpies Hunting Grounds. Mark of the Rose again. And Barrage Blast. Uh, more of a generic card for trains. And probably going to end up being one of the more least valuable com or Ultra Rares in the set. Um, if somebody doesn't figure out a way to use it. I'm not a big fan of the Mirror card either for Harpies. <laughs> Snowplow Hustle Russell, it's time for the Hustle Russell, guys. Uh, Ruffian Rail Car and Red Rose Dragon. Very interesting uh, new car for the Black Rose deck. Again, Synchro's not the. I guess, I mean, with. Uh, you can always figure it out with Link Monsters, but. I guess more Synchro players like the classic formats. Harpy Queen, Rose Blue Rose, Harpy Ladies. Harpy Lady Elegance. So there you go. Usually the Harpy Lady sisters are more, have some actual skin to show in the pictures. Censorship wise. And almost done halfway with this first box here, you guys, and then we're gonna go full speed ahead. Uh, we haven't really pulled any Harpy Lady cards. Dark Rose Fairy, oh, this one's pretty cool. Little lowly fairy. Just tuner special summon except in the damage set. You special summon this card from your hand. If this card's in your graveyard, you can summon one card from your hand or field the grave, place it on top of your deck. So kind of like a plague type card. But you can special summon it from your hand. Right. Um, but yeah, I think we'll probably try to put the deck cores on uh, the website as well if you guys are interested in the decks. Nice, Harpy Oracle. 
Just kind of like three of each card that you would play three of in the deck. Maybe less for the more expensive ones. We'll see. Uh, Wing Beast, four star, 1300. And so this one's interesting because, <clears throat> of course, like most Harpy cards, becomes a Harpy Lady while on the field or in the grave. Um, but you can use each of these effects once per turn, so you can use both. If you control a level 5 or higher Harpy, and that's kind of the new requirement for getting the uh, really additional effects, or the more beneficial effects. So level 5 or higher Harpy, monster on the field, special summon this card from your hand. So that's kind of your extra benefit. Uh, but the cool effect down at the bottom, you can read that. Um, if this card's normal, special summon, add a spell slash trap from your graveyard to your hand that specifically lists Harpy Lady Sisters, and it's text. Nice. Hopefully we can get... Well, we'll see Perfumer either way, but Perfumer's insane. I don't know if I've actually seen a card like that before. Cyber Angel Ben 10. Didn't know Ben 10 was, a, was in here as a Yu-Gi-Oh card. That's pretty cool. Luna Light. <laughs> ben 10. Mm. Uh, Hustle Russell. Rose. A uh, Magnificent Machine. Uh, so for the set, I believe you have nine ultras, eight supers, and ten commons. For your ratios, if you guys were to open up lots of cases for this, I believe the rares should remain the same in the ratios, while some of the supers, though, um, are going to ratio. Woo! Alluring Mirror Split. So this is the mirror I was talking about um, with Harpy Lady and all the Spandex Girls. But, uh, yeah, they have to be destroyed by battle to get the first effect, and the other effect is when this card is destroyed by your opponent or your Harpy cards. Uh, special summon one from the grave, something, something like that. So, the two Ultras right there, probably the more lesser uh, valued Ultras in the end. After all the prices kind of fluctuate. Uh, but we'll see. Keep going here though. Ruffian, Harpy Ladies, Luna Lights. And now for the left side of this first box. Again, we're taking this first box a little more slow. Check out the pictures. See what's going on with the cards. I think four archetypes in here, right? Cyber Angels, Harpy Ladies, Trains, and Luna Lights. Queen, Blue Rose, Red Rose again. Nice. Okay. Let's keep it up. And again, you guys, um, post in the comments below. Let us know what archetype you're interested in playing and why you think it is the archetype you'd like to play. Nostalgic, um, you think it's the better one from this set? Let us know. Um, but as I was saying, so uh, yes, you'll see about even ratios for your rares, but the uh, commons, there's a couple of more short printed commons, but um, for the supers, yeah, you'll see some different uh, lower printings of some of the different supers. And then ultras, like I said, perfumer is definitely your lower printed. Ultra Black Rose. Frozen Rose. This is an interesting ultra rare card. Um, again, though, I mean, I wish Konami would just do like one card in the set that's a super or ultra, or even one card in the set in general can be ultimate per case. You know, give us just a higher ratio. So, um, a higher rarity card just so we can have some fun. Whether it's for buying the boxes as just your average casual or if it's somebody that's trying to uh, make money buying the boxes, I mean, you know, give it, make it a little more of a game. Um, I think that would be really cool. Just one card is ultimate per case. Yeah. Anyways, Frozen Rose. Uh, send one face of monster control to the grave to apply this effect depending on the type it had. If it's a plant, you get to draw two cards. You better put one back or discard one. And then if it's a non-plant, you can add a plant monster to level four or lower plant from your uh, hand. It is quick play, so it's kind of interesting. Um, but, yeah. Send a face up. It also has to be face up. Just a few too many requirements, but still a good card. Especially if you're playing plants. There's another common black rose for you guys. But again, yeah, you guys, we'll be getting back into videos. Just kind of uh, figuring out our groove after uh, seeing exactly what, you know, quantity and demand and price we need to meet with buying and selling cards as a online store before we get into a retail location here in California. Moon of Lights, Cyber Angel, Ida Tim, Red Rose Dragon. 
When is the last time we saw Harpy Lady support cards? I feel like the set with the uh, Xyz Harpies, uh, baby Harpy Lady, or maybe it was was it Dancer Ben Ten's back? Dancer wasn't in Legendary Collection Joey. And I forget the Xyz set. That'd be Zexel. It's also it's nice to see a lot of support for Train in one single set as well. Though. Triangle Ecstasy, Harpy's Feather Storm, um, and as you guys can kind of tell, we've seen most of the cards already, and so it is a duels pack set. Uh, Harpy's Feather Storm, pretty sweet card I think for your Harpy decks. If you control Wind Winged Beast Monster until the end of this turn, negate any monster effects your opponent activates. That's pretty crazy. Um, if you control a Harpy Monster, you can activate this card from your hand. Even crazier. If this card is in its owner's spell or trap card zone and is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, add a Harpy's Feather Duster from your deck or graveyard um, to your hand. And some people were talking about them removing Harpy's Feather Duster from the ban list. I don't know about that. But um, still would have been interesting to see a maybe a new art for Harpy's Feather Duster in here as that ultimate rare that comes once per case or something that'd be cool but no just uh to see harpy's feather duster in here period with maybe new art or just a reprint could have been cool special schedule blue rose super dreadnought keep going here cyber angel dakini Harpy's Feather Rest, nice. Now this is pretty sweet card. Um, I do like the picture as well. Just some Harpy Ladies chilling. Um, but it is very good. So target three Harpy Lady and or Harpy Lady Sisters in your grave, shuffle them in your deck, and then draw one. So already pretty sweet. Gets you to do some shenanigans and you get a kind of upstart gobble on effect. But if you controlled a level of five or higher Harpy Monster, so that additional bonus effect we talked about earlier, draw two cards instead of one. Wow. For the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, you cannot spell some monsters except to win, then you can only activate this once per turn. Uh, but that's absolutely insane if you get off the bonus of drawing two and putting monsters back in your deck. So, me likey. Likey, likey. Heart, heart. All right, you guys. So, Feather Rest, definitely one of the more valuable cards in the set. Um, I think it will retain a decent value, maybe $10, $10 or higher value for sure. The These three, not so... Not so sure about. Simply and lucky on TCG player should be a link to this video. You guys can check that out. Okay. Luna Lights, Leo Dancer. Luna Lights. I'm just curious because I feel like one card will rise. Just talking about value aspect of the set. One card will rise in value while some of them, most of them drop. So it's kind of fun predicting which of the better cards you think will rise above that 20 dollar value and stay there black rose uh, this is an interesting card incarnated machine angel what exactly is going on there all right guys a couple more packs left in the set usually you'll see five ultras in a box uh, sometimes though you get six every now and then sometimes you'll see four <laughs> uh, incarnated again harpy's hunting ground And the last pack for this first box here, you guys. Ruffian Rail Car. Oh, nice. It's Flying Pegasus Railroad Stampede. Um, we're actually going to check him out. So this guy is, um, if it's normal or special summon, you can target one of your Earth Machine Monsters in your grave. And then special summon in defense position, but its effects are negated. And then uh, you can target one other monster control of the level of the monster of this card. becomes the same level of that one. So it's, again, just a way to exceed. So very cool. Also 1800 attack, if that matters. <laughs> you don't see that very often anymore. Um, so we're still missing quite a bit of cards from the set. Like I said, it was nine ultras and eight supers and then 10 rares. So let's go ahead and do another box here, you guys. Uh, this At this point, we're going into the massive opening part of this video. So it will speed up quite a bit and uh, we're gonna go a bit faster through the cards. But um, yeah, let's see what we can do. We'll probably go for another 40 minutes. I don't think we can open 11 boxes in 40 minutes. 
That would be uh, pure speed of opening packs. But um, we'll just see what we can do here. So I'll set some packs there and some packs there. And uh, let's see what we can do. Okay. So now we've probably seen most of the commons in the set. If you guys didn't notice, Train Signal Red is in here with most of your Luna Light cards and Machine Angel Rituals. Uh, some people were trying to find some different uh, interesting ratios, not ratios, but uh, I guess factory errors in printing for like the top boxes in the cases had better, uh, sometimes better ultras or something like that. But that's usually going to just be a per case thing if something like that happens. Uh, Lunalite Saber Dancer. So here's one of the, I think, definitely more crazy cards in the set. And it is just a super. Imagine this was an ultra and the short print ultra at that. Uh, so this is three Lunalite monsters to make the Saber Dancer here. And she is actually very a very pretty card if we can get a good still of her. Very cool. Lots of cool stuff going on there. Um, must be fusion summoned gains 200 attack for each beast warrior monster that is banished or in the grave. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Already a god, that's like a god type effect. During your main phase, except the turn this card is sent to the grave, you can banish this card from the grave and then target a fusion monster control and it gains 3,000 attack until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect once per turn. Pretty crazy card. Gains 300, 200 attack for each Beast Warrior monster that is banished or in graveyards. So, uh, yeah, cannot be targeted by card effects. I guess targeting doesn't matter as often um, anymore. But still, pretty insane card, especially for Super. I feel like that card really needs a higher rarity. Um, okay, let's keep it up. Black Garden is back. The Red Rose Dragon. What was the difference between the two? Uh, if this card's in the grave, secret material, special summon one Rose Dragon monster from your hand or deck. Oh, a little side information. I believe it's called White. So you have Black Rose Dragon and White Rose Dragon. White Rose Dragon, everyone thought at first it should be in this set as an ultra rare card or whatnot, but it is actually going to be a super rare in the special edition of Savage Strike. So the second printing of Savage Strike. So if you're wanting White Rose Dragon, that's when you're going to get it. So maybe get your uh, Rose Dragon cards or uh, Black Rose Dragon cards in the time being for the deck. So you can special summon one Rose Dragon. So that's why it says that, if you guys were curious. Monster from your hander deck, except Red Rose. And then if it was sent to the Synchro Summon, blah, 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 Black Rose or Plant Synchro Monster, you can add a Frozen Rose or Blooming of the Darkest Rose from your deck to your hand. Interesting. So it actually lists the specific cards you want to use so it doesn't get too crazy. Ruffian's back. Ooh, Harpy Lady Perfumer. Oh, baby. There we go. Second box. Um, the girl of the set with her spandex and all. Most sex, well, most censored set. Um, here we go. So, four stars. Oh, man. Whenever I look at the stars, I'm always reminded of how the whole card's foil now uh, for the attribute and stars. Anyways. Wing Beast Effect, 1400 attack, 1300 defense, kind of your average for your Harpy Lady cards because the original Harpy Lady, I think, was exactly that or around there. Um, this card name's called Harpy Lady, Field or Grave. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a spell slash trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists the Harpy Lady sisters in the text. If you control a level 5 or a higher Harpy monster when you activate this effect, you can also add a second such card. You can only use this effect once per turn. Wow. That's a plus two in uh, our language of the Yu-Gi-Oh world. That is interesting. Imagine if Stratos could search twice if you had an eight-star fusion on the field or something. I don't know. Or, a, or just a hero fusion monster on the field. That'd be insane. So, getting a little crazy with some of the cards here. There's also a super crazy special summon of um, train cards in the set. I'm not going to remember the name of the card at the moment, but definitely... Ooh, 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 ooh. We'll just set this down here. Another Alluring Mirror split. Um, but yes, um, the interesting thing about this card, you guys, is that I think it might go up in value. So 
The card that I'm interested in, oh, Lunalite Fusion, that's actually really good. Fusion summon a Lunalite Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. If your opponent controls a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you can also use one Lunalite monster in your deck or extra deck as fusion material. Dang. Only activate one per turn. Dude, any fusion that comes from the deck is insane. When you're fusing from the deck, that's when things get out of hand. I want to sleeve that. It's all right. Um, so very good. Lunalite Fusion. But it does require your opponent to have a monster that's special from the extra deck out. Express. Um, not going to lie. I don't know much about the Ritual Angel cards. That's the one deck I haven't really messed with or kind of seen played too often. I do know the Ritual Angel cards are very good. So definitely check out Frozen Rose is back. Frozen Rose. So it's a Red Rose Dragon and Blue Rose Dragon in here along with, what is it, the Rose Girl? What does it say on the box? It says Girl girl Power. Girl Power. So. Okay, let's keep it up. Come on. Still looking for some of those ultra cards. Um, but yeah, just like with Legendary Collection, um, what's his name? Uh, Legendary Duelist, see Joey was the first one, but Joey cards actually have gone up in value a little bit since they dropped down in value, so interesting thing to note. But uh, Pegasus, man, Millennium Pack, you guys, is insane for value, and that's why everyone's actually kind of like, you know, these Duelist Pack cards are pretty sweet when they're nostalgic reprints um, or nostalgic support cards. So, Flying Pegasus again. So it is a little more entertaining, not only for the casuals, but the um, card shops. Cyber Egg Angel. Harpy Ladies, which we'll sing. Luna Lights. All right, you guys, come on. Let's see if we can get something moving here. We'll just finish off this side first. At least we did get the Perfumer. Another Oracle. I feel like, do we have all the rare uh, supers at this point? I feel like we do. Um, we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I believe we do. So, again, it was 9 Ultras, though. So we're still lacking in the Ultra department. That is for sure. We um, definitely need, I believe we have, well, the machine, the uh, train card for sure for your two level five machines. It's actually extremely insane. And there it is. Oh, baby, you guys. I was feeling it. I was feeling the urgent schedule. So check out this card um, before we get into kind of the second effect or second or the possibilities you can do with this. Um, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, so that's kind of easy to do if you're going second, especially. Uh, special summon one level four or lower and one level five or higher earth machine monster from your deck. So you can go get your flying Pegasus or your other uh, railroad cards that copy levels uh, to get them to be level 10. So, or level five or higher, which you can go get your level 10 uh, machines, or sorry, your level 10 uh, railroads. <laughs> Choo-choo trains, trains, gosh. Um, so you put them in on the field from your deck in defense position and negate their effects. Um, you cannot de declare attacks for the rest of the turn that you activate this card, except with machine monsters. So, kind of like, okay, whatever. If this set card is sent from the field to the grave, you can add a level 10 machine monster from your deck to your hand. And you can only use each effect of urgent schedule once per turn. So if you are stuck with two, maybe you can wombo combo one into a card in your hand. But either way, um, this is a quick play, first off. And this is a quick play, meaning... Um, you could possibly use this in response to your opponent. You could use this if there was a need to do some sort of uh, super polymerization type deal. Um, now I'm forgetting if that card's banned, but I'm pretty sure it is. Not too sure off the top of my head now all of a sudden. But anyways, just being a quick play gives you more possibilities. But check this out, you guys. You can actually use this card in an ancient gear deck. I believe it's Earth Machine, right? Earth Machine. Ancient Gears. And guess who just got support in Ancient Gears, from Ancient Gear cards? The freaking um, Millennium Pack set. And have you guys checked on those Ancient Gear spell cards and cards from that set? I believe like the Ancient Gear Fusion is sitting from $30 to $40, some insane amount. So now there's another card 
that not only helps one archetype trains, but helps another one ancient gear. So I think this is really going to end up being um, the more valuable card in this set. And if any card's going to go up past the 20 mark, I believe it'll be this one. That's my guess. Let us know in the comments below, you guys, what you guys, what card you're thinking is going to be the uh, powerhouse card in this set. So I'm going to go ahead and sleeve this up. I feel like you could just play a train ancient gear deck almost with a card like this. Absolutely insane. I think it's currently the second or third most valuable card in the set as from uh, the point I'm making this video. And of course, things are changing very fast. <laughs> Maybe you guys will see very different things once uh, this video is public. Uh, so we're going to keep going here. Still missing a couple cards. I'm trying to think what they are. Seven. So we'll just see uh, what rares or what other cards we get from this box and go from there. Uh, we ended up doing a lot more talking than opening, but that's okay. Again, not trying to make the video too long, and I just want you guys to see most of the cards in the set. So a couple things I will want to talk about now for a minute, and eh, Merciful Angel, um, is what's been going on. So last video was made, uh, I believe, around Christmas time, so it's been a couple weeks. Maybe a little less than a couple weeks, but it's um, been a couple weeks since making videos, and so I really do want to stay on top of videos, you guys. That's Videos is sim uh, simple and lucky from a production standpoint from videos um, has always been kind of my dream job. Now, you know, maybe a card shop has kind of been my dream job, but opening a card shop and, uh, you know, running a card store or multiple card stores, if I'm able to open, open multiple eventually, or hobby stores, maybe even game cafes, I don't know. That would be more of a very uh, work-related type job. You know, it takes a lot of work. It's infinite work in, you know, in a sense. And it's going to take a lot of time. Um, Harpy Lady Feather Storm again, nice. And it's going to take just honestly a lot of stress. So um, that is a dream to do that. But I don't know if you want to say it's a dream job. Simple and Lucky, uh, as a in a video sense, is really a dream job. This is honestly one of the more um, chill, fun, awesome things for me to do. Like it's literally opening, you know, opening packs and talking about the cards and the pulls with you guys. I mean, even, and I know a lot of you guys know I'm not currently playing in the format, uh, like you would see, um, uh, Sam doing or even, uh, Simo, but still just like, especially if we're doing some of the classics, you know, it's definitely something, it's one of the probably things I enjoy most, um, you know, besides, you know, I was about to say like family or whatever, but just it's it's uh, it's something from it's something nostalgic that you really can't beat. There's so many memories that uh, come from something like this. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to say, even though, whoo, super dreadnought, real cannon, juggernaut man, uh, very cool. Even though uh, there's lots of things going on with Sip and Lucky, it is becoming a business. Like you know, I get. So honestly, it's almost 10 to 20 comments at least every day. You know, people sending messages or commenting on videos. You know, Simple and Lucky, we feel like you've changed. We feel like all you care about is business now and all this stuff. And yes, I am getting older. Oh, there she is. Garden Rose Maiden. Um, just to finish the thought. Yes, I am getting older. And I guess as you get older, I'm starting to think about family. I'm starting to think about, you know, uh, when I'm going to be able to build a family. If uh, I can have a business that supports a family. You know, the kind of stuff you guys see YouTubers honestly usually quit for. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I need to get a real job now. You know, I want to, you know, have a, have a life where I can support children and uh, support my family in general. Um, and so YouTube alone definitely can't do something like that. But I swear I'm thinking if I am able to build a card store up, that is where that kind of, uh, I guess, job would be. But YouTube itself, you guys, I I'd, I'd honestly, I don't think I would ever want to quit YouTube. And if I do have a family, I'd, I just want to put them on YouTube with me. And uh, I would really would be daddy simply, you know, type deal. Uh, I, for some reason, lots of guys are calling me that now. But I guess it is the younger guys, I would hope. But um, yeah, it still blows my mind that some of you guys are older, or sorry, younger than Yu-Gi-Oh! 2002 or I guess TCG. So that's crazy. That's, that's 16, 19, 17 almost now. That's, that's insane. I guess I'm 27 years old, but it's just insane that we've been doing Simple and Lucky for so long. This is Garden Rose Maiden, by the way. And this is a mix of a Japanese type art and kind of an anime type cartoonish feel, just because that's how Yu-Gi-Oh is. They don't want to go too crazy with it. But um, this is kind of the first time we've really seen such a beautiful art in Yu-Gi-Oh or for a very long time. So I'm trying to get the camera to focus. But if you guys see this, 
it's really more similar to after going to Japan, especially, and I do have Japanese videos I still want to get out for you guys. Um, it's more similar to a kind of Japanese type art style, but a very beautiful card. Did they really censor this and take away some cleavage? If they did, that's really just blows my mind. There comes a point where you're looking at beauty and you should see, okay, I just feel like I'm complaining at one point, but just, you know what I mean? Like this is really a pretty card. Um, her effect though, I don't, you know, she's a 1600 attack, 2400 defense. And she'll probably be a kind of a mid-tier card in this set. But it is really cool that when she's special summoned, period, so you can actually synchro summon her and then special summon her again. You, whenever she's special summoned, you add a black garden from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And then you can banish this card from the grave to target a rose dragon monster or rose or one dragon synchro monster in your grave and special summon it. Um, so you can only use each effect. So you can do both of those in one turn. But yeah, once per turn. So really beautiful card. I guess I wanted to talk about that. I guess this is more becoming a uh, effect type opening instead of massive, but I mean, we'll, we'll get three boxes in at least, hopefully four. But yeah, so as I'm as I'm getting older, this was something I just wanted to talk about a lot of you guys, uh, to a lot of you guys about with, but um, as I'm getting older, I guess you definitely have to have that mindset of, you know, I do want to support a family. So it is there, but I do not plan to really ever quit Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said, or... Uh, Quitting Yu-Gi-Oh, that's, that's a hard thing, but quitting YouTube. I would definitely still want to uh, make videos with my family and be a part of that with you guys. And I don't really, when people say, I quit Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, like, how do you quit something you've done? I've done that my whole life, since I was in fifth grade, you guys. I mean, I can't really quit. I mean, I guess I can quit competitively, but I don't know. Some of you older guys that are kind of like me that have been playing since you were, you know, 10 to 15, or just kind of been around Yu-Gi-Oh, how do you just quit? Why Why would you quit? It's not like the game costs a million dollars to play. Yes, it can be, you know, technically more than, more than a thousand if you want to be competitive. But, I mean, for the nostalgic cards, as long as you're not, like, actively collecting the most rare and valuable ones, um, it can really be like a treat to just kind of be like, hey, man, call up one of your dudes. You want to play some classic Yu-Gi-Oh for a bit? And so I really do enjoy the fact that I, I can do that with you guys, um, especially on camera. You know, that's really sweet. Another Barrage Blast. Interesting how we're pulling a lot more of those. Um, but yeah, so. And if I do seem like uh, that glint of, uh, I don't know, kind of that sparkle in my eye has dimmed a bit from having to, you know, kind of grow up a bit more and gain more responsibilities, just know it's still there. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. I definitely enjoy Simple and lucky and all it stands for, but just just realize I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. It's just uh, I guess it's it's a little different to be totally um, into an opening. I mean the, the, the nostalgic ones, like especially for that Christmas special, I was having a blast. I don't know about you guys, but you know for the newer stuff, it's it's newer you know it's newer cards and it's it's cool to hype up an opening and hopefully get some of the cool cards from there. But um, it's obviously not the same as a nostalgic opening for like it was in the past so but yeah next steps for uh, simple and lucky would definitely be opening up the shop um i am from modesto california and i know i get we get lots of messages from you guys saying you know when can i visit the shop and we will open up shop here guys but it is a stepping stone shop this is more just to have a distribution area for the online stores we're trying to set up um and eventually, and you know, because we, we don't, right now we don't even have space to do Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, and let alone we'd like to do all tabletop games, most tabletop games anyways. And eventually, you know, create our own would be a final goal. We love this guy. Is that two in one box? No, we just opened the one. Um, but yeah, we would love to continue to do Yu-Gi-Oh, obviously, and make, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is always going to be my main game. Honestly, I would love to go to Konami one day and just be like, you know, Konami, can Simple and Lucky just work directly with you and we just create things together? Um, again, that's why I was trying to visit Japan. I would like to visit Japan once a year and um, we talked to Konami a little bit, our first time visiting. And I'd like to vlog, you know, whenever I'm there so you guys can go there with me. And just kind of see an, ex an exciting future for Simple and Lucky on the YouTube side or production side of things. But also, if you're interested in the card shop aspect of Simple and Lucky, you know, it can only get better on the card shop wise. Um, Simple and Lucky Productions may 
um, continue to get better for videos and quality. Um, and make, oh, urgent schedule, baby. Here we go. Um, oh, baby. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we'll always have, you know, the epic quality, but I don't see it really ever going down. But um, card shop wise, you guys, you know, like if you guys have ordered from us, from the website directly, from TCG Player or eBay, you know, we're still learning how to package product properly. We don't, you know, we're never missing orders and we're still learning like we've gotten some negative feedback. Like people are like, you know, where's my order? And then we're like, okay, well, you know, we'll resend it right away. And people are like, oh, you're sending it for the first time now. You know, it's, it's kind of something we have to learn from. It's like if someone doesn't receive their order and we just kind of have to go with that flow from that conversation. Uh, just like a learning process. And of course, we're still trying to find a way to package product um, in a better way. And, uh, you know, eventually just have our own Simple and Lucky merchandise, Simple and Lucky packaging, and uh, keep growing from there. So, but yeah, a lot of you guys were asking, where's the card shop going to be? It'll be in Modesto, California. Um, and as for where, I'm not sure yet. Um, but it won't be the biggest and best store, that's for sure. I definitely would like to give you guys something much, if you're gonna travel from somewhere that's not in the US especially, even from two hours away, I would I would want a bigger and better place for you guys to come. Um, and I should be at the store on a daily basis unless I'm traveling, whether it be for business or family. Um, but yeah, so. But the goal is to definitely have one video a day for you guys, especially on uh, Simple Lucky TV, which are more chill videos. Uh, you guys have probably noticed by now where the team, the squad is more doing their thing. And then, uh, nice, Saber Dancer. And Simple and Lucky is more like right now where I'm more, uh, get to review newer products, um, do some more higher quality or higher quality videos where it takes a little more effort and time and planning and uh, we would like to make a video day on Simple and Lucky, but I just don't really want to, I don't want to guarantee something that, oh, feather rest, baby, let's go. Uh, where's Perfumer? Little, uh, little shit. Where's she at? So, but yeah, it's a learning process. Right now, too, we have um, kind of like six people on the squad here uh, working on shipping and packaging and whatnot. And then you guys kind of know online, you guys know about Rick. It's funny, speaking of Rick, he was not the biggest fan of this set. I was like, so uh, Rick Rick is the editor, by the way, for the videos, but he's also just kind of like, I, get, I don't know, hit my gen, the general of the Simply Squad Army, I don't know. Um, but, and Rick is from Argentina. Hey Rick, well I guess he's from Venezuela, but he's in Argentina. And um, yeah, so I was talking to Rick and I was like, hey, so what's uh, what do you think's going on with this set? <laughs> this uh, Legendary Duels of the Rose set? And Rick's kind of like, eh. <laughs> And I was like, what? Isn't it exciting seeing all these cool Harpy cards? And you got your uh, your Black Rose cards, even Luna Lights. You know, I was never a Luna Light player, but still I know that the deck can be fun. Um, even now, competitive with these new cards. And Rick's kind of like, you know, eh. <laughs> He's like, I just like, Rick said he liked uh, White Dragon Abyss a lot better. So that's one point of view. I guess you could see, you know, more Kaiba cards, Blackwing cards. And I've seen um, some reviews of this set, you know, people talking about how they like White Dragon Abyss much better more uh, cyber dragon you know cyber dragon support was in that but um you know rick said that he does like the train support but i guess he feels like harpies and black rose will never really get there as a as a deck um <laughs> sorry rick throw you under the, throw you under the train not the bus the train yeah um but yeah so some more negative reviews of this set but again like Cards that can support two archetypes, that excites me when I see something like that. As Perfumer is the short print, her value can't go too far down, uh, for sure, but I think she's still, the possibility for a plus two literally makes her one of the best cards ever made for a single archetype. I mean, I don't need to be in the competitive format playing every day to know that. So uh, that is that is something very interesting. Like even uh, Urgent Schedule is almost a plus two in some sort of way where it's just like, if your opponent controls more monsters, so I get it has a requirement, just like how Perfumer has the requirement of, you do need to have the three Harpies, but of course, to get that more beneficial, um, oh, it is, it's not even three Harpies. Uh, I'm thinking, sorry, I'm thinking uh, Feather Rest for the three Harpies. But yeah, you just need the level five or higher uh, Harpy card, Harpy monster, which is gonna be the sisters or the, uh, well, I guess, 
Harpy, why is Harpy's Pet Dragon not in here? Give us an alternate art Harpy's Pet Dragon for a set that has my on the cover. And put a little, like, shadow of Harpy's Pet Dragon in the background. Shoot, I'll have one of my graphics guys work it up for you, Konami. Jeez. Why would we not have a Harpy's Pet Dragon in here? Or even a Toon Harpy Lady. That would be sweet. Or a Toon Harpy's Pet Dragon. That doesn't exist, right? I feel like I'm thinking more of a Chibi the Baby version. I don't think it exists. But still, like, where is the Harpy's Pet Dragon in here? I feel like maybe... See, I don't want to complain about one of the archetypes because I like to see the Luna Lights because that makes it more competitive, so that's cool. Train cards are cool, but I like our cool ancient gear train support. See, I want to say, like, maybe keep Black Rose out and give us some more support for the Harpies, but... I mean, I like Black Rose cards, and I think that picture is absolutely beautiful, so I don't want to complain. Yeah, it would have been nice to see, you know, a... Uh, tune. I, I would expect a tune version of a Harpy card because Konami... After, we've been made. Didn't we make a Toon Harpy Ladies? And Konami, Konami actually uh, tweeted about. Oh, I don't know if they tweeted about the tunes, but still. Ooh, mirror split. Um, but I, Konami, somebody in Konami's had to have seen a new tune. We have a Toon Harpy Lady Sisters. Shoot, that could have been a level five. That's been would have been usable for these uh, beneficiary, the second tier, god tier effects of these cards. Level five Harpy Monster. All right, it's kind of fun. I've never, never really thought about it before. Making, uh, going through the massive opening and talking to you guys about kind of updates that have been going on. I guess it has been uh, quite a bit for a uh, simple and lucky video. And it looks like we have two, four, five, six, seven. So box number five here. Four. And it looks like our average is about five ultras per box. I wasn't even really paying attention on those last couple. Um, it looks like, yeah, this is box four, maybe five. I don't. Know. But let's keep going. So, uh, yes, harpies feather rest, baby. Come on, I love, I love me some of them harpies. I don't like them all being censored. You know, there comes a point where I feel like TCG Konami needs to take a step back and kind of look at the player base. Yes, there is children playing, but take a second and look at some of the Pokemon cards. I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh cards at a point are even more censored than Pokemon. And come on, Pokemon is definitely for kids. You have a freaking in, uh, protagonist that is doesn't age <laughs> and he stays 10 years old or whatever, however old Ash is. Um, but yeah. Because, like, now us older guys in the Pokemon world were like, yeah, red is cool, blue is cool. You know, the guys that actually get older. Um, but, yeah, at a certain point, I feel like your player base for Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely, like, the under... You can't play the game to its fullest potential if you're not at least, like, 14. You need to have some sort of concept of shapes and sizes and math and constructing thoughts and arguments and predicting moves... You know, like, I feel like if you were grown up, you, know, you grew up with Yu-Gi-Oh, you could pull it off. But just, I just don't see a 12, a 7th or 8th graders, if you're from California slash America, a 12 or 13 year old coming into Yu-Gi-Oh and being like, I got this. You know, I just don't. The game is pretty dang complicated. So, I feel like the player base is a good average age of 20 to 25. Really, it's more in there. Especially with the us older casuals getting older. The, older guys, the the seniors, Yu-Gi-Oh seniors, um, but at a point, an art form doesn't necessarily have to deal with censorship and putting spandex on people to make it look more uh, presentable to children. Because I mean, uh, you know, I guess now I'm just talking like I'm old, but I mean, a girl's body or even a a body of a monster doesn't necessarily need to be seen something you should, should censor but more of an art form garden rose made dude i love this man it's great it's great um yes so i don't know i just feel like do we really need to censor cartoon monsters i get it it's uh something that is very <laughs> i don't know I feel like I shouldn't keep going with that one. But yes, cartoon monsters can do something for the younger minds. But it's just cartoons at the end of the day. We lost the rare. 
That's okay. We still got our super. Keep light fusion. But do we really still only have one? You guys, you guys are seeing this, right? We have one, um, one perfumer. That's pretty crazy. So I don't think I've seen a case where you have less than three perfumers. So we should still have three. You guys just aren't seeing the boxes um, that we have going on here that would have three perfumers. But yes, again, you guys, I don't know if you're still watching the video at this point and having a blast going through the cards, learning about Simple and Lucky, and I guess Roman, and the behind the scenes. I mean, it just makes me excited to think about how we'd continue, there's Angel, Izana, how we would continue to, uh, continue to post YouTube videos throughout uh, the future. Alluring Mirror, dude, we love this card. Um... Even after starting a family, that sounds fun. So. Can't stop, won't stop. Here's a machine angel. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, this is box number four. Girl power, you guys, come on. But yeah, um, if you guys have any comments, uh, questions that deserve answers in the comments below, that deserve answers. Well, most most questions deserve answers, hopefully. But um, that you feel like, because I'm gonna have the whole squad reviewing comments for this video for a cool minute, just because it's been a it's been a bit. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to post them down there, and I'll try to get back to you. Nice frozen rose. And uh, this will be the last box for this video. But overall. Um, I guess my review for this set, you guys, I like it. I like how they didn't just focus on the girls necessarily. They did throw in the trains as well to kind of mix things up. Um, but being a nostalgic player, seeing Harpies get support, um, seeing some Black Rose, because you know, at this point, 5Ds is actually really pretty old. 2005, I think, was was it Duelist Genesis? Uh, maybe, no, I feel like I might be tripping at this point. Maybe, I think it's 2006 or 2000, it's 2007. By the way, 2007 is over 10 years ago. You know, something over 10 years. That's really, it's starting to get pretty dang old. Um, so. I really do love opening the classic product, but it's kind of starting to get that, get to that point where it's getting more and more valuable. So at this point, I'm kind of searching for special editions or collections. If you guys are actually interested in getting rid of uh, your classic card collection for Simple and Lucky videos, we're really trying to look for some stuff right now um, to you know, bring in more, more content for you guys, especially more of that casual, classic, nostalgic content. Uh, feel free to hit us up on, um, what do we got? Facebook. Um, Facebook. Um, you have Instagram and there is another one, Discord. I know I personally haven't been as active on these as I would have liked, but we do have the squad checking things. So uh, do not feel lonely. Um, but yeah, just opening up a shop. It's actually uh, pretty difficult. If you guys have seen uh, Alpha Investments for Magic videos, he's a, he's, you know, he's a pretty, pretty crazy dude, but he does go over kind of the different aspects of opening up a shop. And he's, uh, it's very true, the different things he experienced and uh, um, you know, all, those, all the different aspects that go into opening a shop. So I'm hoping to kind of do it right the first time around, but also learn from my mistakes. Last pack of Destiny. Can we get a perfumer in our last pack? Give it to us. Kaiba! Hey, Izana. That's cool. Like I said, probably the more uncensored card in the set. Still very nice. Um, but yeah, at the same time, this, the shop that we're opening matter will be our first shop and I would like to keep it open forever. That would be cool. Um, but I would like to also use it as a stepping stone in a positive way, not like just throw it into the dirt, um, to make the mistakes we need to make to learn. And then of course, open up possibly the most epic card shop or hobby shop in America. That would be the goal. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know I talked a lot more than usual about things that aren't necessarily the cards we're opening, but I made sure for that first 20 minutes, for that first box, we did get get in there real good. 
Um, but yeah, so again about the ratios, it's nine ultras in the set. You have eight supers and then 10 rares. Rares have even ratios. The uh, ultras um, kind of go up and down, but for urgent schedule and heartbeat perfumer, urgent schedule, you're gonna see a little bit less printings along with a couple of these other cards here. While uh, Harpy's Perfumer is about three, I think it's like a three point something average for most people that have popped it open, but let's just say four for now. It's definitely on the lower end for the short print, just like Bingo Machine Go from White Dragon Abyss. Um, and yeah, let us again know in the comments below if you guys have anything to say about the different archetypes in here. And uh, if you're happy about getting some train support slash ancient gear support, I really wanna play some ancient gear cards. It kind of excites me to know that ancient gears have more support and I wanna mess with it. Um, Oh, man, I want to do deck profiles. That's honestly, deck profiles is one of the hardest things to do because of the time it takes to understand and play in a format. But uh, man, I just, maybe once we have a shop, we'll have some more time to sit and relax and play with some of you guys that come in. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on the shop for sure. So don't worry about that. But yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of the different archetypes and if you're happy to see some support and uh, what you guys think about the censorship in Konami. Do you think the average age of players is that high? Or do you think it is lower? So the censorship should be there. I feel like most of you guys would be like, uh, no, nanny. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. And so uh, Simple and Lucky is back. Honestly, I do want to get... There should be a video every other day. I don't see why I would not be able to do a video every other day. If I have to wake up at 6 a.m. to make a video for you guys. I love making Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Especially just videos in general for Simple and Lucky. For you guys that are um, you know, fans of the show. So. But yeah, you guys, as always... Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out um, links at the top of the description. We have the simpleandlucky.com website where we have bundles up of the different archetypes along with singles for the set. Should be TCG player price. Um, and then eventually we should have all of our cards up on TCG player. We have a link to our TCG player store uh, storefront uh, below uh, at the top of the description as well as our eBay storefront. So you guys can check out both of those and get an idea of what we got going on there. Just kind of different ways to price cards and sell cards, eBay auctions and uh, best offers. TCG players more like, oh, can you, you know, what can you do with the market? TCG player you'll probably see the lower prices, but at the same time, um, maybe not as we won't be as prevalent on that market, you know, that kind of thing. Supply and demand, so fun. But yeah, you guys, so check out those links at the top of the description below. And uh, please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe for more epic Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Uh, Simply Lucky TV, uh, we do want to do some massive just openings from the product that we're kind of putting on the different markets. So that would be fun. Uh, see some of the Simply Squad members and uh, see what's going on there. But uh, yeah, you guys. And Simply Unlucky, signing out.